All right, now I want to ask you a simple question. I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself using a computer. Now, you're probably if you're like the average person, right? You're probably imagining yourself interfacing through the operating system's graphical environment with multiple different open windows of different user programs, right? It's like the classical image of what using a computer is in collective culture or most people's memories, right? But actually using a computer today and using, you know, a modern operating system today is becoming less and less like this. Like, I genuinely believe the average user just has worse options today compared to like 10, 20 years ago. I mean, I can't speak for, like, Mac OS, because it's, like, the computer equivalent of a McDonald's kiosk, so... I don't, I don't know what it's like over there, but on, on Windows and Linux, especially, it's, uh, getting very bad. And I'm not- I'm not talking shit on the kernel space developers, or the operating systems themselves. I already did that in, like, another video. I- I am talking shit about the actual software ecosystem of these platforms, and the software you know, the desktop program developers themselves. Although I feel like in Windows case specifically, the operating system developers of Windows are much more to blame for how horrible a fucking platform it is than in Linux's case, right? Because they've basically turned Windows over time into Internet Explorer, right? And every, not to say that there still aren't good, unique, traditional desktop programs available on Windows, there are but they're typically not the first choice for most Windows users when it comes to a lot of given tasks. A lot of the biggest software that people are using out of just pure convenience or just uh, out of just comfortability and what they're familiar with is like web app plastic garbage, you know. It's like the software equivalent of like mass-produced plastic shit compared to what used to be like locally made, unique, Something that put, like, th actual thought and care into the overall design, aesthetics, and practicality of it, right? You know, on, on the topic of, like, web apps becoming increasingly more prevalent when it comes to traditional user space programs, you know, AI and, and its role in all this is probably going to make this problem, like, ten times worse when, for the, you know, they call it the business logic side of the program, which is, like, the actual part you need to develop for, like, the functionality of it, right? Everything else is already handled by Electron or whatever the fuck, you know, your browser. That part, if that starts getting made by AI, then we're really gonna get some real, uh, real heavy hitters when it comes to just complete fucking slot pieces of trash that, that are passed off as actual user programs that we're expected to rely on, you know. See, so yeah, I'm of the opinion that user space software reached its absolute zenith, or peak, in the 90s, right? Maybe a little bit of the 80s and a little bit of the 2000s, but mainly the 90s, right? And I, I think it's, I think we've eclipsed a point where we'll never get back to that era, right? In terms of what soft, what software development was like and what the landscape was like at the time, the industry was like at the time. It's like um, the 50s and 60s when it comes to like car design. We'll just never, we'll, we'll never be back to that, right? It's a completely different fucking world we're living in now. Because of this, you know, huge, huge uh, demand for all this different, like, user software, when people started actually, you know, getting computers in their homes and using them on, on a daily basis, you know, it, it was sort of like a Wild West era where any sort of, like, wacky or crazy experimental shit that you can fucking think up of that could possibly be useful or innovative in a certain way was just as valid as an option as plenty of other pieces of software that people would actually use or consider, right? There wasn't really a set standard when it comes to how something should be or how it how it needs to interact with everything else, right? Which there there are like flaws to that obviously and there are downsides to that. Obviously nowadays we have much more uh, refined standards for like how a user program should behave, how it, how we should interact with it graphically, right? But um it doesn't have that same sort of unique charm to it. And it doesn't really have the same care, thought or put into its design as, you know, programs in the past did. And I mainly think that the users of the time were the best off during that time period. They weren't, you know, limited to the homogenous software ecosystem that we have to deal with now, but they were much more free to experiment with things 
because those options were available and there were there were more significantly different high quality options available to the user that, that's the main important thing right which I'm, I'm i'm all for supporting certain philosophies when it comes to certain contexts right when it comes to software design you know especially when it comes to like kernel development or you know working with like limited hardware and like an embedded environment right but when it comes to user space development i don't think it's the best to have to restrict you know software developers or, or user space programmers down to just one specific uh, ideology of software design or, or to some hegemony of, of like values when it comes to software design right and when it comes to Linux specifically, that's usually, uh, that, that hegemony is usually Unix philosophy, or, or even more specifically, Suckless philosophy, right? Which, you know, before anyone gets angry, I have zero problem at all with Suckless software itself, or Unix philosophy itself, because those are obviously valid philosophies when it comes to designing software, that is, that, that is very important when it comes to certain domains of software. And I still think it's important to have that as an option in user space as well, right? I think that's super important to have as an option in user space for people who want more, uh, like, efficient, less bloated programs, right? But people like nice things. People like to look at things that look nice, that feel nice, that act nice. And I feel like sometimes Linux user space developers will limit themselves needlessly to these specific values of highly efficient, highly minimal and light software. But I don't think Linux should become homogenous, right? I don't think Linux should all, you know, there, there's a reason why I, I know a lot of people criticize Linux because there's a billion different, you know, software teams working on their own stuff, their own distro, their own programs and, uh, you know, kernel utilities, whatever, right? All, all this different stuff. But that's sort of what makes Linux the most appealing to, like desktop Linux users is the freedom of choice. Obviously, like their belief in open source software and free software and all that stuff, that, that's important as well. That's probably the main underlying principle. But for practical use, when it comes to configuring their systems, when it comes to using a computer and the experience of using a computer, they like having options. They like having uh, the ability to choose to not have this program, to not have this uh, init system, to not have this. Uh, package manager, right? They like they like they like the freedom of choice, the genuine freedom of choice when it comes to Linux, right? And I think that's something that should be emphasized and celebrated among Linux software developers. And I think homogenizing, uh, you know, Linux user software, this like Unix philosophy, suckless stuff, is going to be worse for the Linux software ecosystem long term. Or l l let me ask you a question if you use Linux or you've ever installed a Linux operating system on your computer before, right? Do you, in, in your application finder or any other equivalent to your distro, right? Or do you press like the command key or the windows key? Do you see a program or when you open an image file, does it automatically open a program called image magic? You know, if you have encountered this program before in the wild, You've probably used it for the first time, and you were like, what the fuck is this? How, how does this work? This sucks, right? Well, this is because the program, you know, the reason why the graphical interface and the input is so weird and unusual is because the program was actually started in the 90s. But, you know, mo most people won't really see the use in Image Magic. They'll just, you know, they, they already have GIMP. They already, probably already have a million different programs that are available to them for simply like finding a file an image file and displaying it in a window right but image magic is used in plenty of other programs web backends etc for creating thumbnails converting images right it has command line utilities it's a very unique program in general just from the design itself of it but also the aesthetics of it since it was made during that era of user software when there was no real like set standard when it comes to this stuff right and it's very, it's a very memorable program because of that. It adds a sort of uh, character <laughs> to the to your computer, ha having programs like that that are very unique in that sense. If someone doesn't want to have that program on their Linux machine, they want just purely functional, efficient shit just on there, like you know whatever. That's, that's perfectly fine. But I'm honestly glad that Image Magic is still included by default by a lot of distros because it's sort of a relic of. Uh, that sort of bygone era of user software where 
software developers weren't afraid to experiment and branch out, right? And even they were even paid for, right? Which is a big, that's a big thing in this whole shift in software design. It's mainly like a money thing when it comes to like companies and stuff. But um, you know, that's less of an issue when it comes to free and open source development because a lot of stuff is like funded by it's either volunteer stuff, people making it just purely out of passion, community stuff that's contributed out of passion or like fundraise stuff, right? I think having more programs like Image Magic and having more programs, user programs that are unique in that sense that have a carefully designed architecture and design to them instead of just some, you know, random fucking generic thing just made to connect with some other fucking thing, right? And and be be completely interchangeable with any other, you know, option is uh, is good. Having, having unique, strongly developed options like that are, are good for the software ecosystem of Linux, and we should probably prioritize that more over software design ideology itself.